What's up, everybody? Welcome to my new series, Drop It Like It's Hot, your host, Drone Worship. And I thought it would be fun to kick this year off with some new inventive things. So, <clears throat> I've had a lot of people ask me if I'm going to start doing tech reviews. The answer to that is yes, I will start doing tech reviews. Along with that, I wanted to have some fun. We are a drone channel. I wanted to integrate drones into this tech stuff somehow, so I came up with the perfect idea. To get us started here, <laughs> I decided to start testing 810G standard devices. If you guys don't know what an 810G standard device is, it's basically a military grade uh, piece of electronics or technology that you can use out in the field of combat or construction. Um, they're supposed to be very rugged, very hardcore, and uh, be able to take quite a beating. Most of them are going to be waterproof, shockproof, can withstand some pretty rugged environments. Uh, or, I'm sorry, pretty rough terrain. So what you have in front of you is actually a phone that held the military and construction market for almost two years by itself in 2013, uh, 2014 through 2016. And that was the Kyocera DuraForce. Uh, this is an 810G standard device. It came with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 quad-core uh, 1400 megahertz processor, 8 megapixel rear camera, 2 megapixel front facing camera, 4.5 inch display at 720p, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes uh, built in internal, uh, up to 32 gigs of expandable memory, and it had a 3100 mAh battery. This thing, actually the screen I'm quite impressed with, it has some very, very, very decent screen color. I was uh, very blown away. The MSRP on this phone was like $400 when it first came out for an 810 standard G device. Um, the pixel density though is only 326 PPI, which really is not that much. But if we're talking today's standards phones, that really wasn't that much. Back in 2014, I'm sure that was pretty impressive. So for, for you know, a, a high-end <laughs> military grade device, I'm sure that was a fairly decent setup. So um, does have LED flash. And like I said, front facing cameras, two megapixel, um, water, dust, and shock proof. Uh, let's see here, IP68. Yes, we're gonna test all of this. And then if it withstands all of my tests, uh, then we're gonna strap this thing to my drone and we're gonna drop it from 400 feet. We'll start with the grass and then we'll do the concrete and we'll see if this thing can survive. I think it'll be fun. Um, it's got an ARM Cortex A7. So even by today's standards, this 2014 phone would be your mid-range device for most people. So this is actually still a very impressive phone by today's standards. Uh, however, it's only running on Android 4.4.2. Um, internal storage was 16 gigs. That would have been impressive for 2014. Um, average battery time. So it only has a 17 hour battery time. So that would have been a major fallback if I was in the military. Maybe not construction, but if I was in the military out being deployed, some kind of reconnaissance or something like that, uh, 17 hours would not make me feel uh, comfortable at all. Um, has 504 hours of standby time. And let's see, it runs GSM. LTE runs all the way up through 4G LTE, 150-150 uh, meg, uh, megabits per second. So yeah, it's it's definitely clocked at one of the the uh, higher rated 4G LTE carriers. Um, 8211 Wi-Fi, pretty standard stuff. USB 2.0. Uh, so it takes micro USB, which is what we've been charging them on here. Uh, accelerometer, compass, barometer. Um, all your basics. It's got most of your basic stuff. The only thing that really sets this thing apart is that it is a 810G standard device. So it's military grade. So this thing should potentially be able to take quite a pounding. And we are going to test that. Um, I, I will turn it on so you guys can have a look at this thing. Uh, it feels very, very rugged, honestly. It feels like it's armor plated. This thing feels like it could really take a savage beating. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna test that today because the first thing I'm gonna do is dump it in some water and hope that the 2014 water seal holds up. If it makes it through that, we're gonna throw this thing at a few trees, maybe a fence, have a little bit of fun with that, and uh, go from there. Um, I had to buy this used because they don't really sell it new anymore. So we're also already coming off of a used device. 
So yeah, this will be this will be interesting to see how far it makes it. And uh, if it doesn't survive my simple test, we're still going to strap it to the drone, even if it doesn't survive, and see uh, how the body can handle a 400 foot drop, even if the cell phone stops working. So let's take this thing out and kick off the first series of uh, drop it like it's hot. I hope you guys are ready. Let's have some fun. Guys, here is the water test. I have no idea how this is going to fare. Remember, if it doesn't survive, this is a 2014 phone. It is currently 2019. We don't know what condition the seals are in on this thing, but we're going to give it a go anyways. That'll really tell you how rugged this device is. So let me turn it on here. And first test, uh, we're going to dip her in the water and see how long she survives. So far, so good. Nothing has turned off. That is all good signs. Can I use it underwater? Nope. I can't use it underwater. That's definitely underwater though. Fully submerged. There you go. Still working. Well, that's a good sign. Let's uh, let's pull it out here and see if it even works. May have to dry it off before I can actually use touch screen and stuff. No, look at that. Even though it was dipped in water, I can still use the screen and stuff. Oh, it may have too much water on it now. There we go. Seems to be working. Huh. Let's, uh, let's dry it off here. All right, that screen's pretty much dry now. Phone is still working. I pull it down. Yep. Full functionality. Okay, so I would say it survived the water test. I think that's as far as we're going to go with that. It was fully submerged in water. And uh, it doesn't seem to have killed it. Everything seems to be intact and working properly. So let's take this thing outside and throw it against some stuff and see how it handles a good beating and bashing. It's supposed to be dust proof and all that fun jazz. So let's go outside and see. Uh, I I'm assuming this is Gorilla Glass at the time. Let's see what this uh, phone can actually take for some punishment. Okay, well... As you guys know, the best tests are performed uh, in the field. So here it is, the Kyocera Duraforce. Um, let's see how it does with throwing it against a few things here. And uh, I'm going to whip it pretty hard, so you'll get a pretty good idea. I'd say that was pretty hard. <laughs> oh, And we still have the screen on. Screen off. Screen on. That worked out pretty well. Let's uh, let's see if this thing goes ding. You think it'll go ding? Let's find out. And we still have power. Not too bad. Power's on. Power's off. Things are working out still. Damage control. Okay, we got a little parting of the case right here. So that was a pretty good hit. I officially have part of the case has been peeled up. Let's see if we can squeeze it back together. We'll do a little ooh. <laughs> we'll do a little damage control here and see if I can squeeze it back together. See if we can prolong the uh, oh hey when it fell it corrected itself. I guess it put the case back together when it fell. Okay, so looks like we're still in uh, good shape. It's powering on, powering off. I can still use the screen. The screen is not broken yet. Let's uh let's give this a really good one at the fence here. I'm gonna lob this one pretty darn hard and then. If it survives that, we're going to take this thing way up in the air. And I think this time I'm going to try to go screen first, even though I hate doing that so early on. We're going to try to go screen first into the uh, fence and hopefully it survives. So, pretty good whip. <laughs> I got the dogs going pretty good. <sighs> Alright. We got water. And it still powers on and off. Okay guys, you know what that means. I hate to do this, but it's time for a simple concrete test. Even though I have a feeling it's going to break it. It's concrete test time. I'm going to whip it up in the air and hope for the best. So here we go. You guys ready? Three, two, one. I'd say that was a pretty hard hit. Okay. All right. USB. Part came off on the bottom. Phone powers up like a champ. Still works. Speakers all. The case has come apart again. If I just push, I bet it goes back in. Sure enough. 
Okay, now this is starting to definitely come apart on the bottom and the top. I squeezed it, it went back together. Squeezed this, it also went back in. I'll tell you what, man, this thing's pretty rugged so far. It'll take a beating, not one scratch on the screen yet. Still holding up. Well, you know what that means, guys. You know what that means. I can see the phone, I can still physically use it, I can touch things. It's working 100% still. Let's take this thing up to 400 feet and see what happens. It's time to drive to a new location because I can't do that in this neighborhood. Just to show you guys what's involved with a video like this, I have two GoPro Hero 4s, uh, a GoPro Hero standard on my head, um, plus I've rigged up this drone so that it has a bait drop on it. So if any of you guys had a 3DR Solo, uh, you can install a bait drop if you want to. And uh, on the other side here, I basically have rigged up a trigger with an extended battery because the one that came in it was small and tiny. So I went ahead and upgraded it so when I turn the servo on, just give you guys an idea of how this works. I can turn this on. There we go. The servo will activate. Let me move this. And then when I push the button, as you can see, the servo goes back and forth, dropping whatever item I currently have attached to it. So all of these have had a charge already. They're all good to go. Um, I've got some pretty strong Velcro holding this on. And uh, I want to point out that I will be hot gluing this with a rigged up glue gun, which I'm about to turn on so I can get that hot. Running on a 2S battery, uh, so we'll let that get hot. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm uh, hot gluing the uh, <laughs> zip tie to the back of this, like so. And the closer you can get it to the bottom of the craft, like this, the less opportunity it has for downward pressure from the props that to get caught up in the turbulence and swing this back and forth and make your drone uneven. Now this is a workhorse of a drone. It's going to carry a gimbal, a GoPro, uh, a bait drop, and uh, a phone that weighs 200 grams all the way up to 400 feet. And it's not even going to struggle. This is a 4S uh, battery drone. It's not 11.1. It is 4S. Uh, the 3DR Solo is the workhorse of the drone community. It's an absolute animal. You'll see that today. Uh, you know, I don't even care that it's kind of windy. You get a little bit of wind out here, but let's uh, let's rig this up. I'll show you guys how this works, and we'll have a little bit of fun. Hey guys, I've got the controller over there, transmitter. I've got uh, this will be shooting at 1080 at 60 frames per second. I have this nice uh, <laughs> area to take off from that makes a perfect target. Hopefully, uh, it drops straight down like it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and power on the uh, drone after I put this on the bottom. So we're gonna lean this forward. Make sure I don't ding up the props at all. Turn this on. We're going to turn this on. Wait for a connection. Excellent. I have a connection. I'm going to open up the servo. Slide that right in there. Close the servo. We are going to lay this back down. The phone is going to hang off the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and turn the drone on. There we go. So now if I push this button, it's going to drop that phone. All right. So hopefully you guys will be able to see this. Um, Oops, I forgot to turn on the GoPro Hero 4. Let's get that turned on here. There we go. All right. Excellent. I'm going to finish getting set up here, and I'll see you guys in a sec. All righty, guys. Unfortunately, I only have 56% battery, but that should be enough to get us up to 400 feet, even carrying the phone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start a recording, and hopefully we've got enough to get up to that altitude. I'm going to try to aim for 400 feet. And so let's get up in the air. Get the phone on there. There we go. As you can see, the phone is hanging. I'm gonna immediately start going up. Oops, I just lost a leg. That sucks. All right, let's see if we can punch her up to 400. I am recording. Before we get down to low battery. We're at altitude 160, 70, 80, 90. I think we'll have enough to get up there. 237. 278, almost at 400. She's climbing quick. There we go, we reached max altitude. I'm gonna go ahead and point the camera down so you guys can see how far this is. I'm gonna start this recording and hopefully at 400 feet, we don't get smacked in the head by a phone. I'm gonna start a recording on here. Excellent, I am recording. I'm gonna go ahead and deploy. 
max altitude to reach 321 i'm gonna stare up so i make sure i don't get smacked in the head and hopefully we can get this on camera you ready three two one deploy there she comes oh boy it moved bam i'm pretty sure that's pieces okay let's bring this back down uh i'm gonna go ahead and bring her back down now i don't think that phone survived a 400 foot drop <laughs> uh, this was no way it started to spin on the way down so that was useless let's bring her back down now i'm at 43 percent and then I'll show you guys the carnage here in a second. Hey guys, uh, that was a full on hit at 400 feet. I just shut all that down. Unfortunately, this camera, uh, it flew from here and then last second it kind of arced and did this. So unfortunately that camera did not get it. But let's have a look at this carnage here. Cause wow, this cell phone is uh, in pretty rough shape I'd say. Okay, awesome. Wow. Oh, and yes, guys, I did bring a broom to clean up after myself, in case you were wondering. Holy mackerel. Um, well, I don't even think it'll turn on. Let's go in the shade here and see if this thing will even activate. Let's see if the screen is even uh, going to turn on for us. Let's turn on the power. Yeah, I, I got nothing. I got nothing. This is pure carnage here. The screen is still attached, but man, that was one heck of a hit. So, that phone did not survive a 400 foot fall. The real question is, is there a phone that can survive a 400 foot fall? That's the quest we've set out on here on the Drone Worship channel. Can I find a device capable of withstanding a 400 foot drop? and survive. That phone would be the god amongst phones. I'm convinced. Unfortunately, the DuraForce did not survive today's events. This will be now a trash can phone. Uh, luckily, the glass didn't like explode, explode, but it is what it is. So, if any of you guys would like to send something for me to drop, please make sure it's under 300 grams if you guys want to give yourself a shout out, write me a letter, put it in the mailbox. My email address will be in the description of the video below. Uh, so you can contact me, we can exchange uh, information and you can send me something if you want to. Like I said, please make sure it weighs under 300 grams, but if you want to see me drop it from my drone, I have no problem doing that. This uh, 3DR Solo does not struggle. Actually, it could probably carry up to a pound, but just to be on the safe side, guys, I want to do maybe 300, 350 grams or less because I am carrying a lot of extra weight already with the camera, the gimbal, and all the other stuff. So if you guys want to send something, feel free. I think the DuraForce uh, said its last uh, well, yeah, and the battery already expanded, so I think that was the last hoorah for the DuraForce. So, drop it like it's hot. Episode 1, the DuraForce did not survive. Drone worship and I'm out. Toodoo!